It's beer o'clock on Real Ale Craft Beer. Today we've got a can of Brewdog vs Cloudwater's New England IPA coming in at 6.8% ABV in a 440 milliliter can. There's a look at it. I'm really interested in this beer. I want to get it open first into a glass, see what we get. And I'll tell you why I'm so interested in this beer. Looks good. So this is part of the Tesco range of beers. They're three pounds can of beer range. That they've brought in stout, sours, IPAs, double IPAs, New England IPAs. Uh, they're really kind of going for it in the, in the craft beer kind of community at the moment. They're really kind of pushing into what we want, which is decent beer in the supermarket shelves. It's nice to see. It looks good. We've got a two finger white head. A nice look to it. It definitely looks like a New England IPA. Nice and hazy, light straw coloured beer. Nice fluffy cloudy head. Small amounts of carbonation rolling up the side of the glass. Let's get the aroma. Yeah, and it puts a smile on my face straight away. Straight away. So many different factors I want to talk to you about with this beer today. So many different factors. I'm going to get round to them all now, but I want to try it. Mango, grapefruit, pineapple, passion fruit. Massive, massive aromas. That's what you expect from a New England IPA. Um, it smells good. Everything's ticked the right boxes so far. Let's dive in. Cheers. Yeah. I gotta put that down. Stone the Crows. Stone the Crows. What a fantastic, fantastic beer. I'm really excited for this beer. Uh, three pounds in Tesco. Such a hard margin to get to is three pounds. To be able to produce a beer with this quality, of this quality for three pounds is an incredible achievement by the folks at Brewdog and of course Cloudwater. I bet Cloudwater had a massive influence in this in this beer. They have a fantastic reputation in not just in the, in the in the world of UK brewing, but the the world the world beer scene. They have a fantastic reputation that they cannot let slip. They cannot let this kind of reputation for their brewing top quality beer take a downward or a backward step by going into the supermarket with Brewdog. It had to be good. It is good. Got a little bit of a hot burn on the back of the palate. Um, there's lots of flavours coming through. Mango, citrus, passion flower, passion flower grapefruit, uh, fleshy blood orange. Uh, it, it's terrific. It's nicely balanced. There's a little bit of sweetness to begin with. A little bit of bitterness on the back end. Tutti fruity, easy drinking, all the flavours in the middle. This is exactly what I want from a New England IPA. So, what do I want to talk to you about? Let's talk. For Tesco, to get a beer in at 6.8% ABV a couple of years ago, three, four, five years ago, would have been unheard of. Well, we had Brewdog's Mr. President, but it was okay. It was an okay beer at best. That was a double IPA. This is a New England IPA, double IPA, oh no, sorry, 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 a New England IPA at 6.8% ABV that is really good. It's really good for the style and it comes in at a fantastic price point of three pounds. That's the first thing I want to talk about. So we got that bit out of the way. Now you can go and buy your mints, your bread, your milk, and you can get some New England IPA in Tesco. Amazing, really, amazing. Where, where the craft beer scene is going, where it's hitting, 
Um, I fully expect in the next two years that, that this whole scene will explode. It's going to go crazy. I think in the world of craft brewing, in the world of craft beer, um, it's an evolutionary step to go into the supermarket. Um, I think you hit a, a, a maximum growth and then you need to go further. The only way you're going to go further, um, I've seen it in Poland in June, is by the brewers hitting the supermarket. While I was in Poland in June, Dr. Brew, supermarket, Pinter, supermarket. These are two of the most well-known breweries, craft breweries in Poland. Hit the supermarkets, Lidl's and Aldi's and, and Bia Dronka. Um, they're going for it. St petrol station forecourts, they're going in there. They, and, but they're still producing really good beer. So if we come back to the UK with, 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 with Tesco, with Brewdog, with Cloudwater, this is as Dr. Brew and Brava Pinter in Poland have, have take their, put their toes in the water of producing craft beer in supermarkets now. This is cloud, this is history in the making. Cloudwater's first beer, technically, cleverly, very cleverly, it's the first time we hear the name Cloudwater in a supermarket. How important is this? Well, Cloudwater a couple of years ago we were voted one of the best, if not the best breweries, craft breweries in the world. That reputation is absolutely kind of up there. It's 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 something that you that you don't want to kind of tarnish, you don't want to lose, you don't want to to paint it with a with a difficult brush. I need some more of this beer. We've seen it over the years. The hype years ago eight, nine, ten years ago with Brewdog's Punk IPA. Believe it or not, you see that beer everywhere now, but back in the day when I started reviewing beer, Punk IPA was the beer everybody was talking about. Everybody, everybody, everybody. They, they took that step. They went into Tesco's. They went into Morrison's. They went into supermarkets. It was an evolutionary step, the first steps into the supermarket. It worked out. The beer was good. People were buying it. People were enjoying it. Then, then who was next? Probably, I think the next big kind of like wow was Thornbridge Brewery. Thornbridge Brewery made a step to go into Waitrose. They dipped their toes, they went into Waitrose, they seen how this whole distribution thing worked, how much they had to produce, when, you know, they started to work with the supermarkets. Now we see Thornbridge in Asda's and Morrison's and Tesco's and, and still Waitrose and probably Sainsbury's, but I never get to go to Sainsbury's because we, we don't have one in Barry. A big one, anyway. So you get you get where I'm going here. The supermarkets, the the big, the nice, the nice craft beer companies who've got a fantastic reputation, reputation, dip their toes and they make their way into the supermarket. When there was probably some, there was probably some shock initially when Brewdog first went into the supermarkets. People were like, "Wow!" Same with Thornbridge. There was probably that kind of. Wow, they're in the supermarket. Magic Rock, another one, another recent, more, much more recent one, is Magic Rock dipping their toes and going into the supermarkets. Yes, they're now owned by a big company, but they made that step. Uh, we bought Dark Art Stout from, from Tesco. I think they've got um, Cannonball in Tesco, now in cans. Um, so they made that, they, they had that fantastic reputation. Everybody wanted to buy their beer. They made that tentative step and they went into the supermarket. So, so very cleverly, very, very cleverly here, Cloudwater sort of put their name in the biggest supermarket in the UK with 25% complete market share in the UK. That's one out of four people shopping Tesco in the UK. They've tentatively gone, right, tentative steps into the supermarket. This is history in the making. First step, Cloudwater make in going into a major supermarket in the UK, but they've done it cleverly with the name Brewdog. This has been brewed and canned at Brewdog. So here's my prediction. My prediction is, if this works out, if, if, if and there's no reason why it shouldn't, the beer is terrific. For three pounds a can, this beer is absolutely fantastic. It's got a lovely OT body, nice mouthfeel, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of bitterness on the back end. I've, give, I've already given you all the flavours. It's a, it's a wonderful beer at a fantastic price point of £3. 
So let's see where this goes. Let's see in the future where the cloud water put out a core range because I don't think Tesco would allow them to brew a different beer every month and chuck it into and chuck it into Tesco's every month. That that simply wouldn't work. So they're going to have to change their business model. Um, they'll have to put a, a, a pale ale, which they now brew, cloud water pale ale. They'll have to brew an IPA and, and a stout and whatever. Core range, core range, and then go into Tesco or whatever supermarket they choose to go into. But mark my words, this is the initial baby steps for me of cloud water going into the supermarket. Next subject, there's so many subjects with this beer hitting the supermarket. The next subject is, for me, I tried all of these beers, all of these beers um, from Tesco's, the three pound cans, um, massive, massive fan of the vocation, uh, love and hate I think it's called, 330 can, Four, 440 can, sorry. Um, terrific, terrific beer for the three pound price point. But for me, the standout beer of that Tesco range that launched in April of 2019 was the North Brewing Company. It was another New England IPA. Off the top of my head, I can't remember the name. I'm really excited. Can't remember the name of the beer. It was by North Brewing Company. It had a red and black shaded can. Um, it was, I think it was a New England IPA, three pound a can, that was terrific, it was really good. So, has this beer from Brewdog and Cloudwater taken that throne, if you like, taken that, that crown off North Brewing Company and produced the best beer for that three pound range currently in Tesco? I'm going to let you know right now. It's so close. It's so, so close. I mean, the North Brewing Company beer is terrific. The, for three pound a can, I was, I was knocked off my feet by that beer. And it just shows you that you can produce a really good beer for three pounds. This, I'm gonna say, is the new number one. The new number one then, New England IPA by Brewdog and Cloudwater. This will be, whenever I hit Tesco, this will be, in my shopping trolley along with the North beer and along with the the vocation the two vocation beers I'm, I, I got a soft spot for the the blueberry waffle stout and yeah I think it's called li either life or death or love and hate maybe life and death it's the 440 can of the New England IPA I thought that was terrific um, and it just shows that it shows the other breweries what you can do for three pound a can um, I, I, I reviewed the donut, raspberry donut chocolate milk stout or whatever it was from a Wildcard Brewery and I was, that had a 1 out of 10. That was a shocking, shocking, shocking example of a stout. Um, the Imperial Stout is it's about to be released on the channel. I thought it was okay. Could be better. Uh, at least it, it wasn't as bad as the donut stout but it could be better. Um, but there's work to do. And there's a lot of people commenting on that on that video, that unboxing video I did from the Tesco beer saying they didn't like the Imperial Stout either. So, so there's work to do, definitely work to do. That was by London Beer Factory. Um, so, so what these other breweries need to do is look at the pace setters. Look at the pace setters, look at what they can do for three pound a can and just, just make it better. Just, just work harder and make it better. I've covered, I think I've covered everything. I think I've covered all of the kind of, I was thinking on the, in the van on the way home, driving my van from Tesco, it's about a 15 minute drive. I was thinking of all the things I wanted to say, all the kind of like significant things that I wanted to say about this particular beer. I think this is a, this is a line in the sand. This is, this is, this is Ayrton Senna flying around Monaco. Two seconds a lap faster than anybody else. This, this is, this could change everything in the craft beer scene. This could be the yo-yo moment. Remember the yo-yo moment when you were a kid? All of a sudden, um, there was no yo-yos anywhere. And then all of a sudden there would be a TV, BBC thing about yo-yos. And then there would be yo-yos literally everywhere. Everybody wanted a yo-yo. Um, this is the yo-yo moment for me in the craft beer industry. Um, this is this is the breakthrough moment. This is probably the moment where 
craft beer goes public, if you like. It becomes mainstream, um, where it's not this niche product anymore. It's mainstream, good tasting beer. And how long have we waited for that in the world of beer? It's, we've probably been waiting since the 1930s, haven't we? Really, when we had that, the rationing from the from the 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 First World War, the sec the the 1930s depression, the prohibition in America, and then the Second World War. That's what I meant. The rationing, where IPAs went all the way down to because of the rationing, because they had to take the malt away from the beer. The the rationing they 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 took the beers down to about three percent, three point five percent ABV. When I was growing up as a teenager in the UK, in Wales. I'd be drinking Brains IPA and it was 3.5% ABV and it was dishwater, absolute dishwater. But IPA, that's what people understood back then in the 90s, early 2000s. It was, it was in all of the kind of working man's clubs and, and, and it was, yeah, you'd find it all over these smoke filled brooms um, with people smoking cigarettes and and drinking a 3.5% ABV IPA. This could be the moment, guys. This could be the moment where, where the IPA comes back into the mainstream. Yes, it's extremely popular in the craft beer world, but I'm talking mainstream thinking. Not acceptable anymore to produce a 3.5% ABV IPA that was rationed to death from World War II. This is the moment, guys. Mark my words, this is the moment. Let's rate it. Three pound a can. Unbelievable price point for a beer, which tastes as good as something that I've had, that I've paid four, five, six, maybe even seven pounds for. Staggering. Very happy man. I'm a very happy man today. Um, just for drinking this beer, just for trying this beer. This is a line in the sand moment. This takes me back to when I first reviewed Brewdog's Punk IPA 10 years ago, when it was a niche product, when it was being sent to me in boxes with, with my brewery tap written on the side of the box. Um, it was small niche IPA sent to me in the post. Um, now it's in the supermarkets. This is the moment, guys. This is the real moment where, where craft beer goes mainstream. I like this beer enough. Honestly, and I've not said this in a long time, Brewdog. I like this enough to give it a 10 out of 10. It's a 10 out of 10 beer from Real Ale Craft Beer. Please put your comments in the comments box. Subscribe to our daily beer and food reviews. Give us a big fat thumbs up. Boom! Cheers.